Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. To complain. Now I want you to listen what I'm getting ready to say. Don't complain about something you're not willing to do anything about. I decided I was going to do a little test, and so for eight weeks, I wrote down every annoying thing that happened to me that gave me reason to want to complain. And in an eight-week period of time, I had 34 things happen. That was one every other day. You should do this sometime. You'll be amazed, and you'll see what the devil's trying to do. He's just trying to absolutely annoy the living daylights out of us. So all of us who have bumper stickers and Jesus pins and big crosses hanging around our neck, just go around murmuring and griping and grumbling and complaining, and then coming to church on Sunday and singing, God is good, and everybody says, all the time. You know, I'm sorry, I've been around a long time, and I just can't, I just, if we're not going to go out and live it, then what is the point of coming in here and singing it? Amen? So here we go. 34 things. Number one, I injured my back at the gym. Water leaked out of my humidifier and bubbled the wood on my table. I broke a nail, which is tragic for me. <laughs> you don't want to be up here with a Band-Aid around your finger. I twisted my wrist. I left some luggage on the plane. The nursing home called about my mom before she passed away. I was taking care of her in the nursing home. And so you never know when you're taking care of elderly people when they're going to have a problem. And it's rarely convenient. And whenever it is, you've got to stop what you're doing and take care of it. So I hear some of you saying, amen. <laughs> so... They called two times about my mom. My back is still hurting. Now I hurt my arm trying to do stretches for my back pain. <laughs> so now at this point, I have a back pain, an arm pain, and a wrist pain. The nursing home called again about my mom. I spilled a red vitamin drink on a white couch. Hmm. Dave hit a golf ball through a window on the golf course. I woke up in the middle of the night one night and I was talking to what I thought was Dave and he wasn't answering and I had spent a few minutes talking to his pillow. <laughs> I spent some money I didn't plan to spend replacing the couch I didn't plan to replace. <laughs> I got my toe caught in my underwear And I, I pulled my little toe. I got the elastic caught between my little toe and my next toe. And <laughs> I'm hopping, hopping around. And I pulled on them. And I, I didn't break my toe, but I'll tell you what, it was black and blue. It swelled up. I actually ended up pulling one of the tendons. It was very painful. I had to tell my very independent 86-year-old aunt, who I also am responsible to take care of, <laughs> that she couldn't drive anymore. You haven't had any fun till you tell an elderly person that you're taking their car keys. <laughs> had to replace my mother's TV so she could have TV ears to be able to hear the TV because I had already bought her hearing aids that she had to have and never wore. Okay, I went one day when I was in another city to the Waldorf Astoria to go to the spa there and get a massage. And when you, when you go to the spa, they give you little lockers and you change your clothes and put them in the locker and you put on a nice little robe. So I got my massage, I went back to my locker, grabbed my clothes, took them in a dressing room, got on my top, you know, different things. 
Couldn't find my pants. No pants. I'm thinking, did somebody get in that locker and steal my pants because they knew they were mine? I thought, well, I left them in the locker. I went back out to the locker, no pants. I looked all over the room, no pants. All right, I'm thinking, how am I gonna get home? I put the robe back on, I go up to the desk, in the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. And you know, there's not many places I go where people don't know who I am. So it's not like, you know, I can just sneak around and do this. So I went up, partially dressed, robe on, the lady says, can I help you? I said, <clears throat> I've lost my pants. <laughs> now see, this is like, this is real life. This is not pulpit life. This is real life. Hey, we got lives just like everybody else does. Amen? And so they said, you've lost your pants. And I said, they weren't in my locker. Well, so now we go downstairs. She comes with me. We're searching. She looks in every locker. Couldn't find the pants. So finally she says, you know, we have a gift shop. And I'll call and you go over there and we'll give you a pair of pants. Well, the problem is, is the gift shop you had to go through the lobby, <laughs> all the way through the lobby, over to the gift shop in your robe. So I got in the gift store and the lady smiled. She said, are you the lady that lost your pants? <laughs> so they gave me a pair of pants. I finally made it home. That afternoon they called and said, we are so sorry, Mrs. Meyer, we found your pants. I said, where were they? She said, well, you apparently left them on the bench and someone brought them up to the desk and turned them in, but we had our appointment book laying on top of them, and so we never saw them. So, that was a fun day. <laughs> lost my pants at the spa. My mother lost her new $350 glasses. We think she accidentally threw them in the trash can. Our water was off for 24 hours. My aunt had shingles in her eyes, which meant we had to take her to an eye specialist. And she can't walk, and she's very heavy, so getting her to the doctor is not an easy thing. I had a situation at work I wasn't expecting. It was a people problem. How many of you love people problems? Dave had back surgery and couldn't go to Indonesia with me, so I had to go by myself. I flew 47 hours in seven days. I didn't go myself, I had people with me, but 47 hours and seven days to Indonesia, and while we were there, the city flooded, and our meetings were basically ruined. Got on the plane to come home and had a stomach virus. Three hours after I was home from Indonesia, I got a call in the middle of the night to come get my aunt from the hospital. I am Luke. Had another employee issue that was kind of tense. Our web went down for two days, that's expensive. The phones went off at the office. I jammed my toe into the leg of the couch. Spilled a box of crackers on the pantry floor. Had to tell my aunt she now had to move to the nursing home because she couldn't stay in her apartment. The fire alarms were being tested all day in the hotel where I was staying, but to top it all off, my 34th thing that I have on this list, every day I make a protein shake after I work out. Well, Dave has this, I made my protein shake, and it tasted really odd, weird, kind of soapy. <laughs> and, and I'm thinking, man. And then I realized what it was. Dave is really good. He does dishes. Dave does dishes. Give Dave a hand. He does dishes. <laughs> However, he will not use the dishwasher. He thinks he gets them cleaner by hand. So he but he's in love with Dawn dishwashing soap, the blue stuff. And he, so he puts all the dishes in the sink, pours water, and he dribbles. Well, I didn't see it, but there was still soap in my shaker dish, my shaker cup. And so I drank my shake with Dawn dishwashing soap. And do you think Dave felt sorry for me? You know what he did? He went around all day singing, I'm forever blowing bubbles. <laughs> Come on, give God a praise that we can live life and survive.
So here's the thing, life is real and stuff happens. And it is so challenging when things like this happen, not to murmur and complain, but let's play the glad game. Instead of being upset we had to walk 27 flights of stairs, let's be glad that we can do it. Instead of being upset you have to replace a couch you don't want to replace, be glad you got the money to do it. Instead of complaining about your job, be glad you got a job. Instead of complaining about your husband, ladies, let me tell you, there's some lonely woman that would take him off your hands. I mean, she would take the imperfect version of your husband just to have somebody to eat a meal with. Complaining is a sin. Numbers 21, four through seven. Talking about the Israelites. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient, depressed, much discouraged because of the trials of the way. Now we're okay being thankful till something happens that we don't like. How many of you know that trials are a part of life? Tribulation is part of life. I'd be surprised if any one of us gets through this entire day and something doesn't happen that we would much rather have preferred that it didn't happen. But I can tell you something, how much attention we pay to those things determines how much they bother us. I can honestly tell you that stuff, even all this stuff that I read you, didn't bother me all that much. Matter of fact, I would have forgotten all of it if I wouldn't have kept a list. But it was amusing to me to just see how many things happened in that period of time. And I was able to stay happy, praise God. And that's what makes the devil mad, amen? Can you stay happy? You know, Jesus didn't die to deliver us from everything. It would not be impressive to people if we were happy and never had a problem, anybody can do that. But when you have situations that you go through, or you're praying and you've got to wait and you don't understand why and there's things happening in your life you don't understand why, trusting God is what we're called to do. Jesus didn't understand when he was on the cross, my God, why have you forsaken me? Into your hands I commit my spirit. I believe. I believe. I tell you what, I'm writing a book on trust and trusting God and I'm really enjoying it. And it, it just, trusting God is not something we have to do. Trusting God is a privilege. I mean, it's a privilege to always have that option of trusting God. Verse five, and the people spoke against God and against Moses. <laughs> Here we go, the blame game. I got a problem, it's somebody's fault. Why have you brought us out of Egypt just to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and we loathe or hate this light, contemptible, unsubstantial manna. Now, they were just beside themselves with amazement not too long before that because manna. And now all of a sudden they hate it. That's why honestly, if we're honest with ourselves, we will end up complaining about things that we beg God to give us. <laughs> then the Lord sent fiery, burning serpents. <laughs> complaining opens up the door for problems. Then the Lord sent fiery burning serpents among the people and they bit the people and many died. Actually, it was 23,000 fell dead in one day. And the people came to Moses, I love this, and said, we have sinned. <laughs> oh, great revelation. <laughs> what all has to happen in our lives before we realize that God doesn't like our murmuring and complaining and our self-pity and all the nonsense, he wants us to trust him and to thank him and praise him no matter how stupid our circumstances look. 
I love Romans 8 where it says, even though we look like sheep being led to the slaughter, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. More than a conqueror. That means that you know you're gonna have the victory before the problem ever starts. And so when a, when a problem comes into our life and says, oh no, what am I gonna do? Just say, I've got the victory. I don't know exactly when it'll manifest, but in the meantime, I have the privilege of trusting God and watching to see what he will do in my life. We focus too much on the problem and not enough on what God's doing to bring us out of it. I'm so glad you came this morning. You're just gonna be so much happier today now. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned and we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed and of course God is good. He delivered the people. <laughs> The Israelites complained and many of them died. But in the New Testament, the Bible says, shares this whole story again in 1 Corinthians 10, 8 through 11. And he says that this happened as an example to us that we would not follow in their footsteps. I love that. So let's just don't take this as some Old Testament story, the poor Israelites, how dumb they were. No, he said, I've only put this in here as an example to you. So we're going to read it again. Verse 8, 1 Corinthians 10. We must not gratify evil desire and indulge in immorality as some of them did. And 23,000 suddenly fell dead in a day. Now here he's calling it immorality. <laughs> Over there he says they murmured and complained. Now it's immorality. And 23,000 fell dead in a single day. Now, I'm not saying if you complain, you're going to fall over dead. That's not, that's not the point of this message at all. But I do want to maybe put a healthy reverential fear in all of us about the dangers of complaining. How many of you agree that complaining is a pretty huge problem with large majority of people? I mean, it's amazing if people, some people today, not all people, but some people, they can get in and out of church without complaining. Yeah, the music's too loud. She preached too long and the lights are too bright. And, you know. <laughs> I didn't get the seat I wanted and I had to park so far away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just let you sit on that for a minute. Verse 9, we should not tempt the Lord and try his patience, become a trial to him. <laughs> he's like, he's saying, you guys think you got problems? You should be up here listening to all of you. <laughs> Nor should we exploit his goodness as some of them did and were killed by poisonous serpents. Don't open a door for the devil. Nor should we discontentedly complain as some of them did and were put out of the way entirely by the destroyer. Now as these things befell them, by way of a figure as an example and a warning to us. They were written to admonish and fit us for right action by good instruction, we in whose days the ages have reached their climax, their consummation. Complain means to remain. Are you content most of the time? Are you high maintenance? Does it take a lot to keep you happy? Does everything have to go your way in order for you not to complain? Now, I want you to listen to what I'm getting ready to say. Don't complain about something you're not willing to do anything about. <laughs> See, you like that one. How many of you complain about how much you have to do? <laughs> no hands? Come on, I know better than that. I can't believe everything that I'm expected to do. No sane person could live like I do and survive. My stress is just unbelievable. I just don't think I can stand this. You know what? You can fix your stress. I mean, I could sit down with you and fix your stress in one hour. 
You say, how could you do that? Help you realize how much you're doing that's bearing no good fruit and how much you're doing because you're trying to keep somebody else happy that really doesn't care about your joy at all. Don't have a complaint without a vision. Nehemiah had a complaint about the broken down walls and he got a vision and a plan to fix them. I love this. Don't complain about your dirty house, just go clean it. <laughs> Martin Luther King had a complaint about racism and he had a vision to end it. Come on. Don't have a complaint without a vision. Habakkuk 2, 1 and 2. Oh, I know that I've been rash to talk out plainly this way to God. I will in my thinking stand upon my post of observation and station myself on the tower of the fortress and I will watch to see what he will say within me and what answer I will make as his mouthpiece to the perplexities of my complaint against him. And the Lord said to me, write the vision and engrave it down so plainly on tablets that everyone who passes by might be able to read it easily and quickly as he goes by. If you got a complaint in your life about your finances, then write down your vision. The day is going to come when I'm going to be totally out of debt. You write these things down, you tack them up on the wall someday, at, I mean someplace, and every day, three, four times, you get your list and say, God is on my side. I give and it's given unto me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. I will not live under the pressure of debt. Amen. Well, I really pray that you enjoyed the teaching today, and I'm about to give you a very simple instruction, so be sure you listen carefully. One of the ways that we prepare for increase or promotion in our life is to be thankful about where we're at. Don't forget to be grateful for all that God is already doing in your life. When you're thankful, it creates an atmosphere of joy and joy brings strength to you. Be very careful that you don't get into complaining because if you do, it's going to keep you all stressed out and keep you right where you're at. And I need this advice too. Sometimes I find myself drifting over into complaining and murmuring. Sometimes Dave and I will even remind each other, don't, you know, don't need to complain, don't complain. And I pray pretty much every day that God will help me not to complain because we are all so blessed. And I realize you probably have problems in your life like everybody else does, but be careful that you don't just look at the problems and don't look at your blessings. in de zon en te zingen in de regen. Een tijd om uitbundig te lachen en onbekommerd op avontuur te gaan en om je vervelende broertje te plagen. Kind zijn betekent leren, groeien, geloven en dromen. Maar ook nu zijn er op de wereld heel veel kinderen die geen idee hebben van hoe je kindertijd zou moeten zijn. Ze zijn alleen bezig met overleven. Deze kleintjes moeten s'nachts vaak slapen zonder een dak boven hun hoofd. Ze hebben dorst, lijden honger en voelen zich eenzaam. Sommige van hen hebben zichzelf die dag meer malen moeten verkopen voordat ze hun misbruikte lichaam te rusten kunnen leggen. Helaas 
is dit niet een verhaaltje over een handvol kinderen in een onzichtbare wereld. Nee, het is een keiharde werkelijkheid. Hier en nu, voor echte kinderen, onze kinderen. Sommigen leven bij jou om de hoek. Anderen hier vele duizenden kilometers vandaan. Maakt die afstand dat een kind minder behoefte heeft aan liefde, bescherming en verzorging? Maken geslacht, ras of omstandigheden dat een kind minder deel uitmaakt van onze menselijke familie? Nee toch? Een mens is een mens. Een nood is een nood. En een kind is een kind. Zo kostbaar in Gods ogen. In welke uithoek van de wereld een kind ook om hulp roept... wij moeten er gehoor aan geven. Op welke grond de tranen van een kind ook vallen... wij gaan erheen. We have traveled long and come so far upon this road and we've seen mountain high valley low we will battle on die ons hun steun waard vinden, zijn wij in staat om vele hulpbehoevende kinderhanden vast te pakken. Maar er zijn nog veel meer kinderen op de wereld die schreeuwen om hulp. Geeft u daar gehoor aan? Ze zijn op zoek naar een helpende hand. Helpt u ons mee om ze die te bieden? Iedere dag worden we door vele stemmen, gedachten en meningen overspoeld. Hoe kunnen we erachter komen wat God ons door bepaalde levensvragen en dagelijkse uitdagingen zeggen wil? Joyce Meyer legt in dit boek uit op welke verschillende manieren God met je kan communiceren. Bestel nu hoe je Gods stem kunt horen telefonisch op 026... 20 22 100 of bezoek onze website joyce-maier.nl Al ontdekt bemoedigende gedachten voor elke dag. Joyce Meyer Nederlands. Het bekijken waard.